I received a letter with a gift from my brother Adam. As a boy, Adam dreamed of becoming a captain with his own ship and a loyal crew. He grew up to live his dream, conquering the sea as the captain of his ship. But today, we finally get to see each other for the first time in years. I can't wait to get to Sunshine Island, where Adam and I will celebrate Neptune Day together. Amber? Hi, I'm Rick, Captain Adam's first mate. He's sorry he couldn't meet you in person, but he was summoned to the island. He asked me to wait for you and take you to town for the celebration. Neptune Day is our island's most important holiday. Everyone gathers to honor the alliance between humans and sea dwellers. We should hurry or we'll miss the beginning. Oh no, my boat! The wind must have run it into the pier. Please ring the bell for the ferry to the island while I get my things out of the water. Oh, is the bell broken? There should be a new one in the chest. That's it. Thanks for your help, Amber. The ferry is on its way, and not a moment too soon. The celebration will begin any minute. I managed to recover my things from the water, including a gift from Captain Adam. He said it was important, and I should hand it to you personally. Happening to me. Help! He turned into a salt statue? What terrible magic could do this? Is this a magical amulet? It looks like it broke in the crash, but hopefully the second part is nearby. Greetings. I am Lorgana, the keeper of legends of Sunshine Island. I've served your brother, Adam, ever since he saved me. Sunshine Island is cursed, but only the town's residents were affected, so you were spared. Everyone else will face the same fate as Rick, if not worse. According to legend, only magic pearls can break the curse. Bring me one, and I will help you. You deserve to know the truth.
According to tradition, once a year, on this day, the townspeople present offerings to Neptune, the lord of the sea. In return, he calmed the raging sea and blessed the island with a bountiful fishing season. This has gone on for many, many years. Neptune would send his mermaid daughters to the island to collect the offerings until the day that one of them, Erin, did not come home. Erin's sisters hatched a plan to get revenge for her death, and today they've sprung that plan. A mermaid emerged from the water during the ceremony and accepted the gifts on Neptune's behalf, but she also brought a gift in return. Her song cast a curse on the island. It turned the townspeople into salt statues, and those she blamed for Erin's death became monsters. Unfortunately, my magic isn't strong enough to completely undo the curse, but I have enough magic dust left to help you dispel the curse on the sailor. Please take it. What was that? Where did this magic come from? I, I don't understand. We'd better hurry back to town. Maybe we can find out more about the spell there. Our revenge is at hand. The people of Sunshine Island must be punished for their misdeeds. I can't believe a mermaid attacked us. We've lived in peace ever since King Charles and Neptune made their deal. They've always been kind to us. I'll look around to see if anyone is hurt. You'd better head into town. Adam said he'd meet you in the main square. You'll be safer away from the water anyway. Get over here! Admiral Morgan was famous for his courage, to his own downfall. One day the fishermen found that the fish had vanished from the island's shores, so the king gathered his captains for an important voyage. Led by Admiral Morgan, they sailed into the open sea to find Neptune and make a deal with him. They were about to give up and turn back, when they heard a mermaid's beautiful song rise over the waves. Morgan steered the ship toward it, but a sudden storm broke out and they began to sink. The youngest of Neptune's daughters, Erin, came to their aid just in time and pulled every sailor safely ashore. Erin became friends with the people of Sunshine Island and persuaded Neptune to make a deal with them. She promised her father that she would only visit the humans during the ceremony. But one day, Erin broke that promise and was never seen again. Admiral Morgan was the first victim of the mermaid's curse, as Erin's sisters blamed him for undertaking the voyage that led to her meeting the humans in the first place. 
please take it. My, my mind is so foggy. I couldn't control myself. Are you Adam's sister? The curse isn't completely gone, but at least I can think again, thanks to you. I remember the mermaid singing at the beginning of the celebration. She said that we had killed their sister and taken what was most precious to them, and in return, they would take everything that the guilty held dear to them. Then everyone turned to salt, but I became a monster and lost control. The mermaids really did take what was dear to me. My spyglass is my lucky charm, and it's been with me for years. But I dropped it when the curse hit me. I think it fell into a souvenir boat. Please, find it for me. Thank you. I can't believe you managed to dispel the curse from me. 
When the mermaid began to sing, I ordered the captains to take everyone they could to the town hall, so Adam must be with them. I'll go to the pier and make sure no ships attempt to dock. I can't let anyone else get hurt. You should find Adam. Here, take this. It will help you open the gate in front of the town hall. You'll pay for killing our sister. Get over here.
Charles was famous for his sincerity and desire to be a righteous king to his people. King Charles himself was the last person Erin rescued from the fateful shipwreck. When he opened his eyes, Erin realized that it was love at first sight, and nothing else mattered to her but him. So Erin took a drastic step. She turned to the sea witch and begged her for a chance to walk on land. She was willing to give anything to live among humans. The sea witch agreed. With her new legs, Erin ran to her love to tell him that they could be together. But Charles rejected her, and Erin's heart was broken. King Charles was the curse's second victim. The mermaids blamed him as the main cause of Erin's tragic fate. Please take it. I didn't kill Erin. If I'm guilty of anything, it's dealing with the Sea Witch. Ten years ago, when the fish disappeared, I turned to the Sea Witch for help. We made a deal, and she said that if I embarked on a great voyage, I could win Neptune over. Our ship sank on the voyage, but everyone was saved, and Neptune took pity on us. But most importantly, I met my love, Erin. I was so in love that I wanted to propose to her. But then, the witch came to me to fulfill my end of our deal. She demanded that I reject Erin, or she would destroy the island. I had no choice. My first duty as a king is to the kingdom. I'll never forgive myself for betraying Erin's heart. Please bring me my wedding ring. I will keep it as a reminder of her and what I've done. What the king did to Erin was terrible, but he did it for the right reasons. I must disenchant him so he can help make things right again.
You did it. You found the ring and freed me from my pact with the witch. I still don't believe that Arine is dead. I must know the truth. When I found a way to break the deal with the witch, I tried to find Arine, but it was all in vain. She was last seen on David Jones' smuggling ship. If we find it, we can learn what really happened to her. Perhaps the truth will calm the mermaids and save the island. Before the mermaids arrived, your brother was helping me track down Jones's ship. He was supposed to visit one of the smugglers' favorite bars, the Seahorse Tavern. Go there, while I check on Jones's other haunts. The tavern is in another part of town, beyond the drawbridge. You'll find something in my safe that will help you lower it. You, dear brother? Sister, I'm so glad to see you, but... The mermaids are close. Dive! It's the only way! There's an entrance to the underground tunnels under the bridge. They'll take you to the Seahorse Tavern. I'll meet you there. that I can't see where I'm going. I need light.
was worried when you stayed back to hold the mermaids off. I'm so glad you're okay. I'm so sorry you're in danger because of me. I promise, we'll get through this. But we need to hurry before the mermaids find us. According to legend, there is a spell that can steal a mermaid's voice, but it will kill her. You see, a mermaid's voice can calm powerful storms and dangerous waters. I think Jones killed Erring to get her voice, but her sisters blamed us. Even now, when our ships are swept away in storms, Jones always returns unharmed. This tavern is a smuggler's haven, so it's bound to hide a secret passage or two. I found a suspicious barrel that Jones must have used to escape. We'll need to get it open. The mermaids are here! Barricade the door while I deal with the octopus! should hold them off for a while, but we need to open the secret passage before they find another way inside. the barricade then follow you what no I wouldn't hurt her Ryan you're getting it all wrong I wanted to protect her watch out what have you done with our sister's voice tell me now The passage is closed! She's watching me. I need to find Arine's voice fast!
humans took our sister from us, so they got what they deserved. But since you're the only one willing to give me her voice, we'll let you go. Now I have everything I wanted. The last voice is mine. You've done your part, and I don't need you anymore.
Davy Jones is the island's most notorious smuggler, but despite that, the merfolk know him mostly for his extraordinary kindness. He saved them from trouble more than once. Jones was Arene's only true human friend, and the little mermaid trusted him with her innermost secrets, but she didn't know that what was growing in his heart went beyond friendship. When the king rejected Arene, she ran to Jones in tears and told him about the condition of the deal she'd made to turn human. If Arene didn't get the kiss of true love by midnight, the witch would get her voice, while Arene herself would turn into sea foam. Realizing that he was about to lose his beloved, Jones opened his heart to Arene. He told her of his love and kissed her. He saved her life, but her voice was gone. Jones foiled the witch's plans to find where he'd hidden Arene's voice. So the witch convinced the mermaids that Jones was a traitor and that he had killed Arene to get her voice. Please take it. You broke the spell. Thank you. Everyone thinks I killed Erene, but I saved her from the verge of death. It was King Charles's fault. I would never hurt her. I'll prove it to you, but we must go to the lighthouse as soon as possible. Please, help me find my chest. Here, this should help you. Thank you for believing me. I'm forever in your debt. Now, let's get to the lighthouse, and I'll prove that I'm telling the truth. Here, you'll need this. Irene, you're okay. I thought the witch got to you. I'm sorry, my love. I couldn't save your voice. Amber, I will tell you the truth, as I promised. I loved Irene from the moment we met, but I knew that her heart belonged to someone else. 
But that night, when Irene came to me after seeing Charles, I couldn't keep my feelings inside, and I kissed her. When I did, Irene's voice left her body and appeared in front of us. Only the sea witch is insidious enough to take away a mermaid's voice. We were afraid the witch would try to keep Irene to the terms of their deal and come for her and her voice. So we decided to hide Irene and her voice here in the lighthouse. Irene can tell you more about the sea witch. We've worked out a special code to communicate. Here, my dictionary will help you understand each other. No, if the sea witch gets all the voices, she'll be powerful enough to wake the kraken. She could destroy the entire island and rule the seas. We must stop her before she gets the rest of the voices. What? Did you see the sea witch turn a mermaid into a naga? That must mean she collected another of the sisters' voices. We must warn the others. Wait, I have an idea. My father was a lighthouse keeper, and he told me that people once used the horn of Neptune to call on mermaids. The townspeople hid the horn to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands, and gave the map to my father for safekeeping. He hid parts of it inside the mermaid statues around the lighthouse. Look around the lighthouse while we search the rest of the building. They look like this.
have a map, but it may not make much sense if you don't know the area. I'll draw the exact route for you. Here, take this. My glider can't hold three of us, but it will get you there quickly. Take to the skies and find the Horn of Neptune as soon as possible. We'll catch up. Be careful, and don't forget to tie the rope to the glider. Here you are. You can't stop me. Just a little more and I'll be invincible! <laughs> Thank you. 
disappear. The mermaid sisters meant everything to each other. After Erin disappeared, the mermaids grew restless. The pain in their hearts would not fade. Desperate, the mermaids went to the sea witch, hoping that her magic could uncover what happened to their beloved sister.
The witch convinced the mermaids that the humans killed Erin to discover the magical secrets of the mermaid's voice at any cost. Revenge clouded the mermaids' minds, and they made a deal with the witch to curse the whole island. And the ones that were responsible for Erin's death would lose whatever they held precious, just as they had lost Erin. So in their thirst for revenge, the sisters fell into the sea witch's trap and became victims themselves. Please take it. What have we done? We've doomed everyone! The sea witch said Irene was dead and the humans were to blame. We walked right into her trap and now her plan has almost succeeded! When she turned us into Nagas, she took away our mermaid voices. And if we returned to our mermaid form, we would have no voices at all. But now that we know Irene is alive, we have to find her! We want to thank you for bringing us this news. The witch put your brother in charge of the sunken ship, the Flying Dutchman. Bring us the magic harp and we can open a shortcut to it. Here, this will help you find it.
Here, this bracelet will help you breathe underwater.
Adam was famous for his courage, bravery, and dedication to his crew, all of which helped him win King Charles' favor. He became Charles' right-hand man and his loyal friend. He was the only person the king trusted with his secrets. Adam was the only one who knew of Charles and Erin's love, and he helped them pass messages and meet in secret. One day, Adam saw Erin running towards the palace. He was happy to see that the lovers had found a way to turn Erin into a human and finally live a happy life. But it wasn't a happy ending after all. Adam's loyalty to the king made him the next victim of the curse. After all, by fostering their secret relationship, he bore some responsibility for Erin's suffering. Please take it. Sis? Is that you? Wait! How are we breathing underwater? I... I only remember the tavern collapsing. Then I turned into a monster. Now I remember. The sea witch ordered me to guard her lair. The witch gathered all the sisters' voices and went to the island's edge to wake the kraken. We can't let her succeed. But first I need to get back to my human form and go out there so I can gather a team to help. They say that someone's most prized possession can break their curse. The most precious thing I have is the amulet you gave me on my first voyage. But it must have fallen out of my pocket somewhere nearby. Here, you might need this.
This should help you deal with the whirlpool. Capture the sea witch while I get help. Irene's oldest sister refused to curse people. She was heartbroken, but she knew that the sea witch was untrustworthy and her deal could be a trap. While the other sisters cursed the island, their oldest sister went to the sea witch's lair to find the truth about her deal with the little mermaids. It turned out that Irene, the mermaid sisters, and King Charles were all pawns in the sea witch's plan to become the mistress of the sea. In search of a way to stop the witch, 
and save the sisters. The mermaid found an ancient scripture that said a melody from a legendary music box could defeat the darkest magic. The mermaid hurried to save her younger sisters, but she was too late. The sea witch had just collected the voices she needed to turn them all into nagas. wasted so much time. I'm sorry that I couldn't stop the Sea Witch or protect my sisters, but there's no time for talk. We must act. As long as she doesn't awaken the Kraken, we still have a chance to defeat her and restore my sisters' voices. There is a music box hidden at the top of the mountain that can stop the witch. I'll help you reach the top, but I need my magic wand to do it. It's a symbol of my mermaid power. The witch broke it to keep me from returning to my mermaid form. Please help me repair it. This is all that I have found from it so far. I wish I could go with you, but I believe you will stop the Sea Witch's evil plan. Here, this will help you get past the Naga statues.
Stop me. In a matter of minutes, I will complete my ritual and rule both the land and the sea forever! <laughs> Perhaps I will take pity and let one of you serve me, but I'll wipe the rest of you from the face of the earth.
Amber, we're all here today thanks to you. We can't thank you enough. Irene, my dear, no one will ever harm you again. I promise that you'll always be safe with me.